Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking handbags and more specifically the handbags that I would own if I could only pick five out of the current collection that I have. I got a lot of interest in doing a video like this after sharing my full bag collection which actually even after filming that I realized that there are a couple that I missed out that were sort of tucked away in my son's room. So it's safe to say I have a very generous number to choose from which we definitely don't need. We can make do with just one handbag two if you want an, a different option, maybe a small bag and then a larger bag. But today we're gonna to condense it down to five. I've gone through all the bags that I own and I've picked out the five that I think are the most versatile in terms of my current lifestyle. So for context, I am a mum, I have a 13 and a half month old son, I work from home, I lead a very casual lifestyle. Because we don't have any family around, I'm not really going out in the evenings, it's very rare, or if I do, I'm going without my husband. And usually it's more of a uh, business casual sort of a vibe in terms of dress code. So I don't need a clutch bag or anything like that. So keeping that in mind, I'm gonna just dive right into it and talk about the first bag, which has kind of been my go-to everyday bag. And I think in terms of value for money, this is a really good option. And bonus point, if you manage to guess which one it is, it is the Quince crossbody camera bag. I have it in the mock croc leather, but it comes in a few different colors in a grained leather, which are really nice. I actually purchased one for one of my girlfriends as a birthday present and she really loved it. So uh, it makes a great gift too, as they aren't too expensive. In terms of actually shopping Quince from Australia, I had to use mail forwarding. So it's really not something I would recommend unless you really wanted to get your hand on a particular item from the brand or from another website, which only ships within the US or another country. There have been a few of you who have gone through that process and have messaged me to say that you were really, really impressed and pleased with your purchase. So I'm glad I was able to help you find a good quality leather bag that uh, is a great size. Uh, this has a zip up closure on the top. I did do a mini review of this in my handbag collection video, but I thought I'd just expand on it a little bit. So I like the fact that it has a zipper from a security standpoint. Also, if I lean forward, nothing's gonna fall out of my bag. That's also another bonus because I quite often am doing that, trying to chase after our son. Uh, and also, speaking of him, he likes to uh, steal things out of my bag too. He he's obsessed with my wallet, it's quite funny. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like inside. You can see I'm using it at the moment. It has a cotton twill lining and then it has a small zip up compartment too, which I think is really convenient if you wanna put in uh, some more precious belongings, that sort of thing. Now, I have seen that since I reviewed the bag, since I've originally started talking about it, they've changed the leather strap so it has more holes punched into it so that you can adjust the length because that was my biggest complaint. And apparently also now the strap matches the bag because on mine I've got a plain leather strap which actually looks a little bit cheap in combination with the mock croc leather. It should be seamless in my opinion, the same type of leather. Uh, but also I took it to the cobbler so that I could get some additional holes punched in so that I could shorten the strap to a length that I felt was much more flattering. Uh, and that was sort of something I flagged if you were petite this would hang quite low on you but now with the additional holes that they've punched into the straps then I, I really don't think it's going to be an issue really good value for money as I mentioned earlier this is under 100 US dollars so a real steal and the quality of the leather is very nice you will be able to see that the bag the leather isn't actually super structured so it is going to soften over time but I haven't had any scratches or anything like no visible wear and tear aside from you know I suppose the general slouchiness to the leather so very very pleased with it I think it's just such a fab little bag um, and when I say little it really is a decent size um, I think in terms of other similar size bags maybe the linear crossbody bag which I love which has a top handle it's a little bit more dressy uh, but that one I would say is maybe slightly smaller or because of the curved nature of the shape it does mean that um, packing it is going to be a little bit more awkward than something that's a standard rectangle. Second bag I wanted to mention is my Celine Trio which is a very similar sort of a shape I suppose to the Quince crossbody bag very similar in size however this one I love because it's got the three pouches so it's really functional very practical you can split your uh, belongings and categorize them which is what I like to do so that I know where everything is each pouch zips up which I really like and then you can actually remove them so you can use this front um, pouch here as a little clutch which I think is very convenient and this would definitely remove the necessity for me to have a smaller evening bag in my handbag collection. 
nice adjustable strap. I wouldn't want to pack too much in this as I have heard people mention that their straps have sort of come loose. The stitching has really, uh, I suppose, dragged from having so much weight on it. So I would keep that in mind. I have the goat leather, which is very hard wearing. If you go for the calf leather in this Celine Trio, it is prone to scratching. So I would just keep that in mind. But yeah, mine, mine does have some surface scratches on it. I bought it pre-loved from eBay and I really didn't mind because I don't feel like they're very obvious and honestly when you're looking at it when I wear it every single day not something that I even think about uh, and yeah I have done a review on this previously when I had a completely different lifestyle and this was just not the right bag for me I'm gonna leave that linked up in the cards if you would like to go and watch that and kind of I guess get an understanding for why I decided to let go of this style the first time around I had a completely different color it was in a blue so uh, a lot more kind of vibrant and bold I suppose considering that for many many years I've opted to wear much more of a neutral color palette the Lighting's a little bit strange today, but hopefully you're getting a good sense for all the colors. The next bag I wanted to mention is the Pollen Number no. One Nano Bag. I have this in two colors. I've got it in the burgundy grain, and then I also have it in the chalk, which is a really lovely pale gray color. I'm gonna say slightly cool toned. Uh, I think if I had to pick one out of the two, I would say it would be the burgundy because this adds so much to my wardrobe during the cooler months. Really love how this pairs with those khaki earthy green tones. I think it looks really, really nice. Works well with black, with loads of different colors, actually camel as well. So look really nice with what I'm wearing today. Um, and this is a really convenient size for a smaller crossbody. Uh, I found that it's worn really well and you'll see it's, it's definitely held its shape too. I have seen other people's uh, number one nano bags and I don't know if they just don't store theirs the same way that I do mine. I have all of mine in the top of my wardrobe and none of the bags are stacked on top of each other. They're all vertical so they're stood upright with enough space in between so they're not squished and I think that Proper bag storage is really key in terms of prolonging the life of your leather goods. And I definitely think it's something to consider or be mindful of when you are spending a little bit more on handbag. Uh, love that this has a little top handle. You can actually remove the leather strap if you like, the cross body strap which has loads of notches on it so you can easily adjust it to any length that you want. It does have this very small pocket on the back which kind of reminds me of the pocket on the Chanel bags. Um, not really very functional at all to be honest and I don't really, I mean I think aside from a bank card or a transport card I'm not really sure what else you would put in there, maybe some receipts. It does have this little flip clasp opening at the front and then you pull it up it's got two snaps here or two poppers which can pop open to get a little bit more I suppose leverage in terms of putting things in the bag it does have more of an awkward shape so that does mean that it can be a little bit sort of of a Tetris game trying to get everything in there in a way which makes sense but overall I mean I just think this is such a beautiful bag really good size in terms of my handbag essentials if you use a continental wallet then this is definitely going to be too small for you but you can always double check the measurements on brand's website if you're not 100% certain only thing I want to say about this bag that I have noticed just from wearing mine a lot is that you are going to get some kind of wear and creasing here uh, at the top of the bag just from opening it up because of how the bag is crafted so it sort of bubbles up a little bit and I'm not really sure how visible that is on camera hopefully you can get a sense but it's really beautiful um oh in the interior I don't think I mentioned this it has a small slip pocket and it's just fully lined in a matching fabric twill the other thing I like about this bag is that it's got the feet on the bottom uh, so it helps to protect it keep it in tip-top shape but here's just another really beautiful smaller crossbody bag I've got a medium-sized bag and then a tote and that sort of would round out my entire bag collection okay so let's go with the medium-sized handbag which truth be told I really don't think this would fit too much more than the other ones that I've mentioned but I wanted to, to include this because I think it is a classic and it goes from working with both more casual outfits and also more kind of glamorous evening outfits. My husband and I recently went out for our very first baby free dinner since our son was born and I mean that in itself was a real treat. <laughs> I ended up taking this bag with me and I feel like it really went with my outfit. It felt like it was appropriate for an, a lovely meal at a beautiful restaurant and 
it held everything that I needed in it as well, which is really just the most important part, right, of a handbag. It needs to be able to work for you and for your lifestyle. But yeah, I like the fact that it really is quite versatile in terms of where and how you can wear it. Um, you can also, obviously, if you want to wear it over the shoulder, you can also make the strap a bit longer so that it hangs a bit lower down. I can technically wear this crossbody, but I wouldn't want to do it in the winter time because it, the strap is quite short, especially when I'm wearing chunky knitwear. I do have this stuff right now. Mine is a vintage bag. I've done a whole video on this. I'm actually just gonna link that in the card so you can go and watch it. Uh, but yeah, it's just got the turn lock. Um, inside you've got the burgundy lining and there's just one large compartment. You've got a smaller slip compartment here at the front. You've also got the love letter uh, compartment zip up compartment at the back there. And then you have that slip pocket on the back, which is basically not functional. <laughs> Can't really put much in there. Uh, so yeah, that is the Chanel vintage plastic flap in the medium size. Mine is lambskin leather for anyone wondering with the gold plated hardware. In the early 2000s, and I'm having trouble recollecting exactly which year it was. I, I feel like it was 2002, but I have a memory like a sieve at the moment. So please don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, they switched to gold toned hardware as opposed to gold plated. And I was quite keen to get gold plated if I could, but beautiful, can't go wrong, and definitely one of my favorites in my handbag collection. Final bag to mention is of course a tote bag, and I think you probably all know which one I'm gonna mention, is my Kuyana tote bag in the black grain leather. This is called the structured tote, but I think that the name is a bit of an oxymoron. It really isn't that structured at all. It's definitely more structured than their classic tote, but it's gonna slap over and I quite like that. I, I like the fact that it's um, not too stiff. The interior on mine is this beautiful pale pink or rose sort of a ballerina lining. And then it also has a pocket on the other side. Don't know whether you're gonna be able to see that. Zip up closure with a little pouch bit in the front. The pocket is raw leather. So if you do put something in there that is a light leather, or something that could potentially get stained, it will. So be mindful of that if you do purchase this bag. I've had it for many years. I've used this bag so much and it's held up incredibly well. Uh, it is. It does have a few creases in it at the moment just from storage, but aside from that, I mean, it's in impeccable condition. I think I've maybe got one scratch at the front here where one of my cats attacked it and that is it. Otherwise, it is immaculate. And that's one of the things I love about a good grained leather bag. I do have plenty of other totes which I think are also fantastic. And I think when it comes to a tote bag, it's all about finding one that works for you. I know many people like a tote that's got a zip up closure on the top uh, and Kiana actually do one like that. I just aesthetically prefer one that is open, personal preference and living in Sydney, I've never really felt too unsafe in terms of having an open bag like this. And usually I would just put my wallet in that zip up pouch and have it zipped shut anyway. Um, but yeah, it's a good, really good option and not too expensive. But yeah, that is it. Those are the five handbags that I would pick if I could only keep five in my current collection. I think if I was to pick five handbags in general, they would probably be a little bit different, maybe a little bit more bougie, but these are the ones that really work for me. I love them. Definitely have a bit more of an inclination to wear smaller handbags just because I find them more practical to have on my body with all of my essentials and then just keeping anything I need for our son in a separate bag at the bottom of the pram when we go out. And that's sort of what I have found works best for me. Um, not going to be for everybody, uh, especially if you don't want to carry around two bags, but that's, that's sort of my my own personal preference. So I'm gonna stop waffling on. I would love to know if you guessed any of the bags that I mentioned in this video. Let me know in the comment section below. And actually, do you know what? I would love to know what your number one top handbag is, or maybe top two, depending if you really can't choose. Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending some of your day with me, and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you very soon. Bye.